Okay. It's 826. 2013. Of course, it's 1 o'clock in the morning again. Uh, 4.5 microfarad 50 volt cap. Shorting out power supply for uh, this disk drive. This one. For this disk drive. So we found that, replaced it. Did a little more chasing around. Uh, thought it hit another problem, but the door was open and measured wrong. But it was just the door being open. So anyway, uh, this one works. This is drive A. This is going to be drive B. Drive A tries to work, tries to read, but I haven't got nothing hooked up. So far, everything seems to be in order. I found it. I found it. Something again. Doggone thing here. These two variable resistors. This is an interface to go from a, uh, a Pertec off the mitts to go from a Pertec drive configuration to a Shugart drive. So that's the little uh, conversion. Uh, little buffer board whatever but these little variable resistors this is what the problem was I was beginning to think it was this this uh, little chip here but this one here was set for three volts and measured it off of that resistor it was set for three volts it would engage like it was trying to read but it would just sit there engaged but I did lowered the volt. I, well, I actually felt around under there. I knew there was something wrong with this board. And I could push down on it or just touch it in certain spots and the thing would work. It would start reading. So I knew it was something, either a bad uh, wire wrap or bad something. So I started poking my finger around under there and it started working. And it all came down to this, or these two. So I tightened it up, brought the voltage back down to 2.75 volts. Now number one works, number two works. I got two just, oh, had a, number one had a blown capacitor in there, one of the little ones, little 5MF titanium. There it is, folks. Drive A and Drive B working. Dual Shugart 801s. Took uh, about a week to figure that out. Popped capacitor and the one drive blowing the fuse and the power supply. One a big capacitor, another little one shorted out. That one didn't catch on fire, it just shorted out. We're starting over. Well, this looks like it's going to be the final configuration here. That's my relay. That's uh, to keep the voltage one volt less, or thereabouts. Uh, one volt less than uh, what drive B requires. And I just don't understand this uh, conversion board. Those two pots on the uh, on the left over here, those two little uh, variable resistors, and all I can figure from what I've seen on the scope is they uh, there's they adjust the strobe uh, voltage on the discs. Uh, I can set the one down on the left and if the uh, marker strobe actually disappears it won't read the disc and if you just bring it up ever so slightly it starts reading it and I can increase that sucker right on up 
and it still reads it, so it doesn't really seem to care, but the one on the right seems to affect both drive A and B. It's the, uh, it's also a strobe uh, monitoring resistor of some sort. Uh, that one there affects mainly drive B. So what I had to do, now this little uh, jumper resistor I've got in here, it's a 10K. I don't know if you can see it or not. But a little 10K right there, that's uh, to keep the voltage on drive A less than drive B, no matter what. And drive B is, uh, now this only seems to affect the really old discs, like the version 1.4 that have been sitting around since 1977, 1978. So I've got this uh, variable resistor externally to adjust the voltage on the, uh, on that second one there. It works. What can I say? So, what I've got now left to do is Poro number three. It'll run with the processor board. I just have to, in fact, I'm using it in this one over here. I'm using its processor board, and I had to borrow its turn keyboard because my turn keyboard, uh, it works but you have to enter the address to access the disk drive each time when the thing decides not to boot and you have to do a hard reset and go through the addresses and all that and blah 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 but with the, just the uh, one prom in uh, this one's turn keyboard you hit the switch bang goes right to the disk despite setting the switches on mine uh, just doesn't, doesn't want to do it so I'm going to take those two boards out put them in here I'm waiting for a uh, parts to come in on the processor board for this one and I'm going to compare the two make sure all the voltages are right and the ohms and the resistance and blah 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 and I'll run its original turnkey board back in there and its original processor board so this one here number three it'll run but just the processor board and the turn keyboard, so just two boards in there. It'll at least get itself up and going. It'll be looking for a disk. It'll have a set of disk drive boards in there. Uh, 1K of memory sure ain't going to take much. And I might be able to do something with one or both of those uh, memory boards. But yeah, it really, uh, it really cooked that doggone capacitor. I don't know if you can see that or not. It got so hot it erased the uh, numbers on there. It's a 93. It's an LS uh, 74 LS 93 and a 74 LS 220. What is it? 233? Anyway, that little. That's, uh, that's what's left of that frickin' resistor. Come on, back up. There it is. Or not, that's what's left of that capacitor. It's, uh, two pieces. He blew apart and the fire went up that way and just burnt, burnt. Yeah. Used to look like this. This thing, it just, I mean, it blew apart. So I gotta replace that and hopefully I can get the, these memory boards as bad as the some of these are. They're socketed and I think I've got some laying around. Maybe not, no, those are hmm. Those are 8Ks. Well, I don't think I got any of them laying around. But anyway, I think I might be able to at least move some up to the upper end where they can't do no harm. I'll just remove them completely if I can just three six seven eight if I can find any bad ones I can take out leave the whole row out completely maybe 
have some good memory left in the thing. I don't think that cap blew any chips. Because uh, the majority of these are all capacitored anyway. They all share the same line. So, that's where we're at. I gotta go through these discs. I found more discs. I got a box there, a box there. I think that one, the top box there, is filled with the, uh, the uh, 1.4 CPMs. Or maybe it's the bottom one. Anyway, they're filled. These here, that's the first stack I went through. I gotta find some place to put these things. Some of these things are bowed. So, that's where we're at. So I got two machines, two disk drives running, number three is all that's left. And that can be pieced together to at least start up and look for a disk. That's where we're at. So we're making progress. You can go deep with these things. I'm telling you, these programs and fixing these things. Mm -hmm. You can really spend some time with these if you wanted to. I don't. So when I get them running, and they're going to go back on the shelf, and I guess everything's going to sit again. But at least I know they ran. And I'm leaving some paperwork behind me. So I'll know what to do the next time I, me, or someone turns these things on. They'll have an idea what to expect, what has been done, what to look for. I'll try to get some of these programs on here. Maybe get some of them filmed on how they run. Not too awful sure about this disk drive yet. It really needs to be aligned. I've got them as close as I can get. I've got an alignment disk. Can't figure out how it works yet. Somehow you got to step it up to a certain track and let it spin, and then you adjust it, and da 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 da. But then you got to have the program to do that. You either got to, of course, they got a book tells how to write one. So that's where I'm at. I don't know how much more I'm going to get into this thing. Just wanted to see these things running again. Okay, that's the update. And it is, of course, 827. It's Been eight though, huh?
This is for 48k CPM, obviously, but I think this disc is older than the 1.41, I think they are, discs. Do I want to format? Yeah, I want to format another one. I've only got two of these that actually read. No, I got one that reads, and one that doesn't read, but it has programs on it and will read. So I'm going to see what I can do with this. Okay, this here has the, uh, this here I think is the oldest disc I have for CPM. It's version 1.4. As you can see, it's from Digital Research and uh, C... What the heck is that? MSD. So... This is what it says. They ask you when, uh, when you booted the thing up. It says, how many discs? Right now I'm trying to copy, make some copies of this. This disc is uh, fighting me. I've got some, most programs. I haven't found MBASIC. I was looking for an old version of that, but it uh, doesn't look like I'm going to get it. But we'll see. Same. So this is going to be the final fix, I guess. So... DMDS's. I don't have many programs for this one. The version 1.4. That's basically them. I've got another disc. Yeah, I think it's still in there. Yeah, that's the some extra ones in there and that's about it that's all the programs I have for 1.4 the uh, stat program there is for a version 2 I somehow got that onto a 1.4 disc but yeah that's all the 1.4 programs I got the M basic is version 5.1 I renamed it to 51 so I know which one it is that's a circa 1978, I think it was, 79 program. So it's not the oldest M basic, but it runs on the on the 1.4. So that's uh, what I've got for 1.4. I wish I thought I had more. I wish I had more. Would have liked to see some of these older programs.